Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to talk to you about troponins. Troponin is the blood test that can help detect heart attacks, okay? Many of you who might have watched my channel might have found themselves in accident emergency with chest discomfort and by far and away the first blood test they do is something called cardiac troponin uh, in which they're looking for damage to the heart muscle. So today I thought I would take some time to discuss this blood test, tell you what it shows and how it can be useful. The first thing to say is cardiac troponins are proteins, okay? It's a protein which is found in heart muscle and it is implicated in the contraction of the heart muscle. So it plays a role in heart muscle contraction. If the muscle is damaged in any way, then this troponin will leak out into the blood. And because it leaks out into the blood, it can be measured in the blood. So this is what tends to happen. Any kind of muscle injury to the heart will cause a spill of troponin to the bloodstream and therefore because of this property troponins have become extremely useful markers of heart muscle damage. And this is why anyone who goes to hospital with chest discomfort the first thing they do is try and work out whether the troponins are elevated because if the troponins are elevated that certainly makes it much more likely that the pains are being caused by damage to the heart. The initial troponin assays, the, the, the assays that were used to measure troponin were quite insensitive and at that time it was felt that any troponin in the blood was distinctly abnormal. As troponins have, the assays have become more refined, what we are beginning to realize is that everyone has a tiny amount of troponin. Most people have a tiny amount of troponin in their bloodstream, but very high sensitive assays are picking up a little bit of troponin in patients. But if the troponins are very high or the troponins are rapidly going up in those patients who are complaining of chest discomfort, then that certainly makes it much more likely that those troponins are being released by damaged cells from the heart muscle. There are five facts I think which may be really interesting and useful for anyone who's watching this video. The first thing is that troponins tend to rise in the blood about two to three hours after cell death after you know muscle cell death so if you have a heart attack or something like that and you get a blood test within say half an hour of the pain the troponins may not be elevated so if you go into a hospital you've gotten some pain you get there in 10 minutes someone takes a blood uh, test says it's normal you you need to wait for a bit longer to see to have a reliable indication of whether that pain was coming from the heart because the troponins could be falsely normal if they're done too soon. So at least two to three hours have to have elapsed for the troponins to go up. That's the first thing to say. The second thing to say is that once they go up, they can stay in the bloodstream for about one to two weeks. So if you had pain, say, three days ago, and you didn't do anything about it and you were worried, you could still go and have your troponins checked now and the troponins will probably still be up and thereby give you an indication as to whether that pain was coming from the heart or not. If on the other hand you leave it two weeks, then the troponins may have all settled down, they may have all been cleared out and the values may be normal, so you're none the wiser. If you ever had pain and the troponins were going up. So let's say you got pain, you go, you get your troponin checked, and then uh, you know within a week or so you got more pain and the troponins were going up, then that points to the fact that something new has happened, another event has happened, more heart muscle has been damaged. Because in general, the troponin values will go down over the course of one to two weeks. If they ever go up, that points to something new happening. So that's another thing to be aware of. I think it's important to understand that the, the presence of elevated troponin, not only does that help you make the diagnosis that the pain has come from the heart, but more importantly, it gives you a good idea of prognosis. Those people who have elevated troponins have a much higher risk of something bad happening to them within the next 14 days i.e. in terms of bad, they're either going to end up requiring a bypass or a stent or have a big heart attack or even die within the next 14 days. So if your troponins are up, it points to a high risk patient. This is why when you go into hospital and someone finds the troponins are elevated, they keep you in and they do all the tests as an inpatient. It doesn't make sense to leave hospital, go home because 
you have to get everything done within that 14 day period because that's when your risks are highest. If you come back as an outpatient, you've missed the boat. If you don't have an elevated troponin, then that points to a lower risk patient, meaning that if, the, if you go in with chest pain, troponins are normal, generally they will discharge you and let you go home, but that doesn't mean you are no risk, it's low risk. It still means that you should try and get investigated by a cardiologist as soon as possible because just because the troponin is normal doesn't mean you don't have a problem with the heart. It just means you are at a lower risk compared to that patient who has an elevated troponin. Those people who have higher troponin should definitely be kept in because of the risks being so high within the next 14 days. A lot of people nowadays have a warning heart attacks, so small uh, little um, heart attacks, which can be um, detected by this elevated troponin, but the big one is gonna happen within the next 14 days if it's gonna happen. So that's another thing to be aware of. The other thing to understand is that the magnitude of the rise in troponin, so does the value, how high the value is, does this give us some idea? And it, it does, it seems to correlate very well with the magnitude of damage to the heart muscle. If um, provided no, nothing is done to minimize that damage. So people with big troponin rises are likely, if you don't do anything about it early on, to be left with big heart attacks. Small troponin rises, small heart attacks, big troponin rises, big heart attacks. But these days what happens is the troponin goes up and then someone gets in there, does a, um, an angiogram, puts a stent in, so thereby reducing the chances of that damage getting worse. But you know, in general, the bigger the troponin rise, the more likely there's been more damage. Next thing is that if the troponin is normal, then that is a good indicator that there has been no damage. If the troponin is elevated, then yes, it does point to the heart, but not always. And there are situations in which the troponins may be falsely elevated. And therefore, it is really important that people don't just look at the troponin in isolation. They need to look at the patient. Is the patient complaining of symptoms which could be in keeping with the heart damage? Uh, and then the troponin helps fine tune that decision making and making that diagnosis. But if someone came to me and said, look, I've got a bit of cough and their troponin is elevated, there could be other reasons for the troponin and they shouldn't be classed as having a heart, a heart attack. Other causes of troponin rises are viruses affecting the heart muscle. So myocarditis, a virus affecting the heart muscle because it's affecting the heart muscle. It will still cause a troponin leak, but it's not a traditional heart attack as such. It's a virus. There's a condition called Takotsubo's syndrome, which is produced when there's a surge of excessive adrenaline in the system, and that can cause the heart to become stunned and paralyzed for a few, you know, few hours, few days, etc. In that condition, you can have troponin releases. Blood clots into the um, lung can cause troponin elevation. Interestingly, in those patients, the troponin settles within about 40 hours. Whereas if it's heart damage, then it goes on for one to two weeks, right? The levels are high for one to two weeks. Another thing to understand is that trauma, so defibrillation, cardioversion, that can also cause uh, the troponins to be up. I tend to see elevated troponins in people who are on intensive care, people who've had bad infections, uh, chest infections, sepsis, that can cause uh, uh, troponin elevation. Even patients who have atrial fibrillation or fast heart rhythms can get a little bit of troponin elevation and they shouldn't be classified as having had a heart attack. But in the right patient, an elevated troponin not only makes the diagnosis of a heart attack, but it also points to a higher risk patient. And it is absolutely crucial that I stress this. If your troponins are elevated, stay in hospital and have all your tests done before being discharged. All the best. Take care.